Okay, True Footy Podcast 28. It's been a while since we've had even you, yeah. Bush off. Bloody oath. How long's it been? We did a draft re- yeah. recap. I think like I did the post draft. I haven't been around since because the timing's always been a bit <laughs> off. Let's <laughs> get the nervous parts out early. That's yeah. good. <laughs> Who yeah. was that? That's no, just the chair. That's just the chair. <laughs> Yeah, I, won't turn that, I, just, I just won't turn that far. That's okay, fine. that's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it's a chat. Yeah. Um, welcome back. Yeah. We've gotten a bit slack on the podcast. I think this is like our yeah. first one in like a few weeks. But yeah. yeah. Two months. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's a big podcast for us because we have our first guests. Um, I've been talking about having guests on the podcast for well, like a year and three months or however long it's been and it's taken this long to finally get you guys on board so thank you first of all we've got Rice Gum that's me the, uh, that's the YouTuber Rich, Rich Brian you might have come across him yeah Rich um, didn't you play a few games for the Western Bulldogs yeah I did as well? um, I got falconed a couple of, a couple of times oh, as well. yeah, yeah. So <laughs> broke your arm broke my arm yeah. yeah and then try to um, bamboozle the uh, the swans the, yeah. The, yeah yeah but, no, that's fine yeah. No, welcome Brendan. That's right, mate. And uh, That's me. Archie. Yeah, Brendan <laughs> Archie. I play for Eagles now, yeah. And Callum Morton, Perth's very own uh, amateur wrestler. No, not really. <laughs> That's right. Uh, welcome. I know you've been watching the podcast for quite a while now. Several days. <laughs> <laughs> just binge through just binge all been, of them. In preparation for this. marathon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're Joycey, right? Yeah. Always my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> I came on just for Joycey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's good to be back, boys, and talking about footy because there hasn't been a lot of footy over the summer. But uh, obviously now we're in the midst of JLT Community Series, which is, um, you know, yeah, a bit of fun. So um, rather than delving too far into analysing some of the games, because I think we can all agree JLT is like the glorified scratch matches and, um, you know, you can't take too much out of Carlton winning against Essendon in the first game, in my opinion. I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, if you ask Carlton fans, they'll all say that it's, uh, they're going to play finals this year. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're winning the flag, mate. Yeah, yeah, well, good. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> Actually, probably not. Stranger <laughs> things probably have not happened in the football. Gold Coast <laughs> winning the flag would probably be stranger. That's true, that's true. Um, so what I might do, boys, is just go through each of you and get you to say a few talking points about the JLT series and uh, what, what you think you can take out of it so far. Bearing in mind, we are in the middle of the Fremantle-Collingwood match, so... That was we- the bone I was going to have a pick at you. Um, I believe you planned this podcast intentionally at this time, so I don't get to talk about the Dockers because the game's still happening. I played it, so this is the way I can watch the Dockers game because I don't have Foxtel, so this is the only way I'd be able to see it. Mate, you're just saying that so you can keep up the Eagles' propaganda according to the comments section. Yeah, that's true. I just I've seen that comment. I've Siri on and it's taken... <laughs> <laughs> it's literally <laughs> just transcripted the whole, <laughs> the whole conversation. Propaganda <laughs> section. <Who> describe? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll start with you, Bush, yeah. as um, a host of yeah. True Footy. I'll just say a few of the first-year kids have looked pretty good so far. Oh, <laughs> they've also been productive on the field <laughs> <laughs> if there's any businesses out there that want to sponsor the podcast um, they've probably just stopped watching <laughs> but, uh, what type of business <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it depends. laughs> Randy's butt plugs <laughs> brings you the true footy podcast um, yeah anyway that doesn't yeah. help at all <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the obvious one Walsh had a real good showing in that first game Sam Walsh yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, 28 possessions or yeah, something? something like that. Yeah. Even Butters looked pretty good. Mm. They took a nice, confident grab, like, beyond his years almost. <laughs> <laughs> Is this what the True 40 podcast is about? <laughs> you know, actually, surprisingly, we've been pretty clean up at this point, but yeah. I, think, I think we're a little nervous. It's, we haven't been yeah. in the podcast situation. Yeah, so I think it's more me and Jesse haven't seen each other for a while, so all mm. the jokes and innuendos come out of Every, everything that's been saved up it's just yeah. Yeah. just sprayed it yeah. it just all at once doesn't even make sense <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah okay so your biggest takeaway as you'd say uh, some the, of the first year players yeah the draft class looks pretty good so far even Quayne or so far in this game's looked pretty good yep he's looked like he's got a good boot on him yeah right yeah, his targets that yeah. sort of thing yeah good call um, Mortz, what about yourself? Any other particular takeaways you've seen from the preseason so far? Uh, I actually thought Brisbane has been playing did play really well. I know it is JLT and it's a glorified scratch match, but like some of the taking points away from it, like uh, Neil and Lyons coming in, big inclusions for Brisbane, um, and then Rayner is obviously 
fantastic young gun, how far can they really go this season? Oh, good call. Well, how far can they go? <laughs> <sighs> I think top eight might be a bit of a stretch, Ooh. but I reckon they'll put on some pretty competitive games this year, much better than last year. Good call, good call. And uh, Lincoln McCarthy as well, who made his move to uh, Brisbane from Geelong to be with his best mate, Lockie I think he played pretty well, kicked a couple of goals and yeah. 17 possessions yeah, as well. Yeah, it was quite good. Yeah. Yeah, I so put him in my dream team after that, but we'll talk about that a bit more later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Lynn. Um, no, nah, Brendan. Tell it's us... Actually, it's actually John. So <laughs> I, go, I go by John. <laughs> Uh, what, what about yourself? What kind of takeaways would you take from JLT so far? Well, one of the main ones is definitely Taranto from JUS. Everyone's t- um, saying that he's going to have a due for a breakout year, especially with Shield moving to Essendon as an extra midfield time. And uh, well, mainly I'm just focusing on that because fantasy-wise I'm very interested. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Taranto's a big one from JUS. So. I do love Taranto. I, my, my opinion at the time when he went through the draft at pick two was that he was the clear best player in the draft and that Sam Palpepper was second. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, I'm just saying. Bold predictions. Bold predictions, yeah. Okay. Bush, um, it's three-quarter time just about in Fremantle's yeah. game. Anything? Fremantle well, looked pretty good considering Collingwood are a legitimate team and they seem reasonably full strength from what they've brought out. Yeah. A few missing pieces, obviously, but again, so is Freo. Brennan Cox playing forward. Which is bizarre considering he's playing back in the Inter club. That yeah, threw okay. me a bit, but I guess he's going to be a bit of a both roles, and I guess without Darcy and Sandy playing, they probably want the height up there. Is he ruck as well? Cox, no. Nah. Okay, so, yeah. Because yeah, Lob, cause Lob's been playing full ruck, he hasn't been really forward from what I've seen so far. Yeah. Tabin has been rucking in the forward half. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Fair enough. All right, well, yeah, I think that's pretty much all we really need to say about JLT. It's only early days. Um, I guess there's been a couple of injuries. Taylor Adams is out for a couple of months. I think that was in the pre-season training. Um, and we'll see what happens to Dusty. Do you guys see that Dusty's gone down? Oh, no? Nah. Really. Yeah, but they don't know. There's no prognosis yet. He just, I think, landed awkwardly. So, um, yeah, some people make it sound like a pretty serious injury, but who knows? It could be bullshit. They kind of glanced over his, like, knee injury at the end of last season as well. True, so true. They're kind of, yeah, could say like that, but yeah, interesting. Dusty's such an X factor for Richmond. Out of like, <laughs> if he's in or out, it's it's a real big deal. Yeah, they've been very lucky with Dusty's fitness. He hasn't really missed too many games over the last two years. Uh, I'd be interested. I mean, I, I feel bad for Dusty, but I'd be interested to see how they go if he does miss games. So, yeah, yeah. historically, he's been pretty healthy, like longevity mm. wise. He yeah. hadn't had too much stints on the sideline. I think Richmond, like across the board, are barely had any injuries their man management seems really good or yeah. they're just lucky or it's players don't get suspended pew <laughs> 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 pew yeah just throwing some shade I'm only joking but uh, it's true um, and it's probably a credit to their medical team as well so um, yeah alright boys it's AFL fantasy time of the year uh, and I think that's what everyone's getting like really into JLT about because um, you get to see sort of new up-and-coming players or players in new roles and new teams and how they're going to go and how many points they're going to score for the year. Um, and I know you guys, particularly you, course, are a big fantasy buff. Oh, no. I'd say you're kind of like my fantasy sensei. AFL fantasy, yeah. that is. No. Yeah. Uh, I'm both both as well, yeah. <laughs> I'm cramming, <laughs> yeah. cramming in so many Asian I'm, I'm references. I'm my own sensei as well. Ah, like. uh, OK, yeah. No. Um, so, boys... Uh, you guys, do you, does anyone here play Supercoach or is it just Dream Team? Fantasy, nah, fantasy, yeah. fantasy, 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 it's called Fantasy. Because yeah. Dream Team is still on, it's just it's like a paid thing, isn't it? So, I, I thought, really I thought they like separated at one point. Oh, you might be right because I only started um, playing Fantasy like last year. Yeah, it might be a few years ago. Yeah, who cares? Like, I thought I thought, I thought it was only two. I was like literally just Able Fantasy and then Supercoach. Yeah, I thought Dream Team rebranded to be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. But anyway, I'm wrong. Talk, yeah, talk, let's <laughs> talk, talk about the important ones. We have a bad history of um, dropping like unsubstantiated facts on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> no, we know everything. So. Yeah. I think it's a true fact. The uh, a true fact. <laughs> true, this true, is the true, true fact, fact podcast. True, true fact. <laughs> if that, um, yeah. Okay, so courts. I want to ask you the first fantasy question. Yeah. Which football player would you like to date? Now, um, who would be... <laughs> that would be uh, straight up Elliot Yeo right there. Uh, yeah, a lot of people say Elliot Yeo. That's a surprising one for me. Brad Shepard's way better. 
way better looking. Oh, we're talking about looks. Ah, oh, no, I, was, I, was, uh, I, was, I was talking about body, body and probably money. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> talking about body, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> God, I wonder how many people just turned off the podcast <laughs> at that moment. <laughs> wow, wow, this is fantasy. Trash. Trash. <laughs> fantasy. Oh, we bring back Joycey. <laughs> we bring back fantasy Joycey. footy. We <laughs> met footy fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. Um, all right, courts. Yes. No Tom Mitchell this year. Who is the first mid that you picked in your team going into 2019? First person that came straight to mind was McRae. Yep. Uh, especially because at the end of the season, uh, ended on for the 190, I think. Uh, the end, Did it, he? Literally last game, yeah, 190. Oh, right. um, and, yeah, so, and then obviously, like, same price, you still probably save, I think, probably like 100k from yeah. Mitchell and McRae, maybe a little bit less. Yeah, but I think, think McRae's like 890 at the moment. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, and it's still obviously... The, expensive than yeah. yeah. The other option would be to maybe get two more, like instead of getting like straight stop Mitchell from McRae, is to get two other decently priced people rather than McRae because that's still a lot of money to... What, what did you spend. do? I, I did McRae. Did I did McRae. McRae. Just as a easy walk-up captain option. Mm-hmm. Um... Just, but then I haven't finalised my team yet, so that could definitely yeah, change. True, I've changed my team like five times a day yeah. over the last it, it, year. It, it, it changes, changes every day. Yeah, as soon as one player has a good game in the JLT, I'm like, whoop. Yeah, <laughs> I saw the take, take of the grain of salt as JLT. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. That's so true. I don't, yeah, but I don't think you can go past McRae as the captain for this year. That's what you've done? Have you yeah. selected him? Yeah, yeah McRae is captain. Because if he, if he gets remotely close to like 190, you double that. I, I didn't get McRae, so I'm starting <laughs> Mate, to feel like, actually. I'm feeling like a dumb shit. I didn't either. Where did you go, Busher? I've gone Cripps as my top midfielder, but I've also done something weird. I've gone... <laughs> now let's keep it Grundy. footy related. <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. Bear no, with me. Sure. I've gone Grundy and Gorn. Ooh, okay. With That's... Grundy yeah, is okay. the captain. Yeah. That's uh, it's a bit of a stangy one, but I like it. It's because they're both consistently like 100-point players, yeah. aren't they? Oh, wait, sorry, who did you say was captain? Uh, Grundy's currently my captain, but okay. I've got Grundy as an option. Cripps, I'd probably even... Some weeks go on, some weeks, depending on... Who have you got as your captain? Uh, yeah, okay, so I actually decided to go a little bit cheaper with my mids and spread it around the ground. Matt Crouch is my captain because he's still quite a high-potential uh, point-getter, but I also got Zorko, so I kind of like... Got my second midfielder. Yeah. Not scared of the tagging again, or um, now we're playing. Now I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am. No, say, Didn't now, he start the year poorly and then really ramped it up? Yeah. Okay. So when you, you just wait until like he gets a bad game out? Yeah, maybe. But they got Neil now. Yeah. So as I was about to say, Neil come in, take some pressure off him. So, yeah. So but then Beam just really, gone. Yeah. So, so same thing. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Ying they'll Yang. rather tag Neil over. It's Zorko Lin Chong, not you. <laughs> 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 Dude, all your Asian, all your Asian community is just there are some now, as well. and then they're just gone. I have some your really four good... subscribers in China yeah. are just like <laughs> locked off right now. I should do have a Vietnam viewing. There's like multiple people that root regularly to it. The footy podcast were real big bots. in Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I guess then we can sort of um, like on Bush's point. I want to know what rut combinations have everyone gone with. Um, I'll start with you this time, Morts. See, this is where I'm really struggling because I've got Grundy in. Um, I think he has the potential to be the, like, as the things already predicted, the best ruckman in the league, especially in fantasy, mm-hmm. um, and just score tons and tons every week. Um, but my trouble is selecting the second ruckman. Do you go for a mid price player that's going to get you 70 to 80 points a week? Do you double up like Busher did and get two elite ruckmen? Or do you just try luck on someone fairly fresh faced and see how many points they can get from him. I've heard Darcy Fort's not a bad cheap option from Geelong. It sounds like he's a front runner for that number one draft almost. Yeah, he's only 170k. Yeah, I presume yeah, exactly. you mean on the yeah, bench. You, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't you yeah. risk him putting I've, got, I've, I've, I've seen people moment, starting him actually. But what was that? I've got Fort on the bench at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've seen people starting him, eh? Yeah, that's yeah. yeah well that yeah, saves you a lot of money. But yeah. um yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a huge risk of him because if and if he's not if, if it doesn't pay off, then you're in a, yeah. you're stuck in a sticky situation. You either get money. It could somewhere. be the next yeah. Sean Darcy. It could be the next Tim English because Tim English his first year when he actually played, he didn't put up that many points. I don't think. Nah, yeah. a, a couple of weeks he did yeah. decently. Yeah, but, but not. It's not. Yeah. You don't want him on your field every single week. I have read that the best ruckmen are always those that have got quite a few years of experience behind their belt, and they because they tend to put on a bit more body weight and 
a bit more experience around the yeah. positioning and what they're supposed to be doing. That's what people said about English. Like he's yeah, got, he's yeah. over 100, 100 kilos now, isn't he? He's Is bulked he? up. That's why people are mainly... Uh, I know some people are going for him because... Mm. He's got, um, uh, they came and said he's got the number one rock spot for Bulldogs. Okay. And uh, he's beefed up, so yeah. he's just potentially. Yeah, that's a good option. Yeah, yeah. that's very viable, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you think about the ruck position, how, like, so much of it is just body and body work. And if you're a taller, skinnier ruckman, it's, unless you're really quick and really good skills, and, I don't or know. Play forward or something. Yeah. 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 Another reason I've sort of gambled with the dual premium rucks is the rule change as well, because there's going to be even contests in the midfield at Santa Tap, so it's going to be easier for a ruckman to get tabs to like advantage and stuff if that di- distinguishes rather than general tabs and the statistics I don't think it does I think you get the same points yeah. regardless of hit outs to advantage is that, is that no, right no, Surely so if it's, just, it's just one point for a hit out yeah, yeah, yeah so even so. if you tab it straight to the opposition you get a point yeah yeah, yeah. nice but I don't know I, I uh, presume that's what super coach is yeah that super coach is different yeah, yeah. yeah. So. what do you guys think of the new rule changes Oh, segue, because I forgot to mention it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to mention that earlier, yeah. Uh, okay, well, one of the ruck-related rule changes was that you can actually grab it out of the ruck now. Yeah, that's what I was Without it being well. prior opportunity. Uh, how that's going to affect DT, I, I don't really know. It just means you're more likely to grab it out of the ruck. And then hands it off. So yeah. it's, it's, it's an extra point. Extra disposals out from a ruck. But then they're foregoing hand, potentially getting a handball, uh, sorry, a tap point, because if they're trying, you know. But then if you think about it this way, if, if a ruckman's going to... Take possession of the ball. It's going to be. It could be a tackle for the other ruckman. Yeah. So that's yeah. instead of just the one point. Lateral. Game. And they can King. chuck it on the boat and get a point for a kick. Yeah, all that as, as well. Yeah. Mm. That's true. Um, so it's pretty hard to predict what I'd say there. Um, but the one that will affect Dream Team is the kickouts. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I just call it Dream Team. Yeah. Uh, kickouts. Is it right that? You know how you don't have to kick it to yourself and boot it anymore. You just sort of run out of the goal square. And they've got extra space as well. It counts as a stat, right? So as long as you kick it outside of the square. So if you you stay in the square, you kick it. Mm -hmm. It still counts as like you didn't um, you didn't play on. It doesn't count as a score. Okay. Um, But if you do run out of the square, you're clearly out. Then if it's play on, then it counts for a disposal. Interesting. That's that's in, it's good knowledge. How do you know this shit? Thank you. I've studied. Right? I've studied. I've done studied. Yeah. Well, so so what sort of players do you think would benefit from that? I'm thinking Jake Lloyd. Yeah. So Lloyd's the main one that uh, we've been looking at. Um, Laird is the other one. Mm-hmm. Um, I have them both. Yeah. So Even the, Zachy Williams is a cheaper. Yeah. Guy. So, so I've got Zach Williams yeah. mine for GWS. Yeah. I, I and he's a cheap option. <laughs> yeah. Four hundred twenty. Yeah. So, if, and if you think about it, Lloyd, uh, Lloyd and Laird were the top two, uh, maybe top three. Who Yo was up there as well, but top two, uh, one of the highest scoring defenders. That's yep. without the rule change as well. Yeah. So if they um, if they add that on top of it, so yeah, that was an extra 10, 10 points to the average. That's amazing. See, so a lot of the fantasy experts online were tipping Sicily to have a big season because of the kick out rule. Interesting. But as we saw in the JLT game, they played up forward most of the game. Yeah, okay, interesting. Yeah. Hawthorne also, did play with the kick out rule. Yeah, they did play a very young team. That's true. Also, the kick out rule, they have to be nine metres back from the square as well, like, so they have, have a space when they run out as well. Are uh, you talking about the man on the mark? Yeah, well, when they do a kick out from behind, he has to be. The man on the mark yeah. has to be further back. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. I think this might. Yeah, which actually gives them extra space as well to run out and extra. This yeah. might really benefit the big men because. Uh, a lot of times previously you see them in a zone and they'll try to go to some short kicks to break the zone and get out of it. If they're getting the good run and kicking over the 50 every time, I reckon there's going to be a lot more contested marks mm. coming out of the back line. Even in the small sample size, because I, I was watching the showdown game and they were saying that like, even in two quarters they'd seen as many contested marks as you would in a whole game in like a half. Oh, really? Because yeah, the whole wow. purpose of it is just to break the yeah. zone and get it more free-flowing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And if yeah. you're kicking to your... This might be where your premium run mm. two options come into fantasy. So getting into contested marks nearly every time it's kicked out. Mm. Even key forwards would be more viable scorers this year with the increase in contested marks because generally a key forward's not that good a scorer unless it's Buddy Franklin or they've kicked a bag. Yeah, if you get the big centre-half yeah. forward running straight from the 50 all the way down to the other 50. I'm thinking that plays right into the reigning Premier's hands, West Coast. That's their strength, marking around the ground. the tools in the reigning Premier's hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's, that's all very interesting, actually. Um, speaking of the new rules, did you guys um, see that what happens when there's a uh, ruck free kick? In the, it was exemplified in the Eagles Geelong game. Yeah, where that's a reset to the position. Tape. Exactly right. So you you have to start six six six, uh, which I think everyone understands right now. Yeah, but yeah. you 
if the ruckman gives away a free kick, he can't take the free kick until everyone's run back into their position. So what happened with the Geelong game was everyone had run in, and because nobody really understood the rule, like Tom Hickey had a free kick, I think, and the, we waited, we lost like a minute before players like walked so back into the position. So they delayed the play on rule then. Uh, they I just guess they have to, wouldn't they? They just delayed, but yeah, everything, the whole game. Like, yeah. which I think there's going to be like tinkered with. I doubt that's going to stay. I don't know how they're going to get around. No, it. especially if a lot of the other rules they wanted more free flowing, like the kick out and the ruckman being able to grab the ball and yeah, no previous or whatever. If they got to stop and pause in the middle of the game and let everyone run back out, mm. I feel like it is true. since it is a new rule, they're still learning it. So yeah. once it, obviously, like from that, they'll probably tell the teams again to like, explain it. Again, mm. so that never happens again. But then I think that was also like shown more because Eagles got a goal out of it. Because was that, uh, yeah, Alan took a mark straight from that clearance, that free kick, sorry, from the free kick that Higgy got. Right. And then that, obviously that would make a difference because yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, which ruck combination have you gone with, Cause uh, At the moment, I am. Have you gone with? with? No. <laughs> I haven't gone with one, so... <laughs> nah, uh, the two I have right at the moment are Grundy and Cruiser. Okay. Cruiser is the interesting one. Obviously, that might not change if he doesn't play, but um, his two years ago, he was averaging 95, I think, mm-hmm. maybe nearly 100. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's really cheap now for his, uh, for his potential. It's probably not okay, but obviously, he's injury-prone, which could, um, which could affect my choice of him. Um... But if he's if he's fit, then I can use a he could be a decent choice. Frees up money for other positions as well. I think Cruz is a huge risk, like a huge risk. I had him last year in fantasy, um, and he started off really well, scoring heaps of points, around ninety, a couple over hundred games, and then I didn't have him for like eight weeks or something. <laughs> <laughs> and just screwed me. Yeah, usually um, with rocks, I go as uh, I just go two primos, so I don't have to worry about them at all. Mm-hmm. Um, usually it's. Um, Grundy or Steph Martin or Gorn in that case. Last year I started with Gorn and Steph. Didn't go Grundy, which is a big mistake. But um, Steph at the moment's injured, or and then uh, and then playing Archie Smith as well. We so kind of don't want to um, risk it with him as well. But and then I was going to go Gorn, but then with the addition of Bruce and don't know how the rocks are going to work this year, then that's a big risk as well. So as Mort said before, uh, the R two position is really a tough one. Mm. I've gone Grundy and McAvoy, actually. Big boy. Yeah. Uh, he's 630k. Um, Kilos. Wow. I, think, I think he's about he's right. He's a big boy. I think, he's, <laughs> <laughs> I think he's a good player. I've gone with Ford on the bench, but the other one I think could be a good pickup as a cash cow is Zach Clark. Yeah. Uh, so I, I have, agree. How many points did he score in JLT? JLT was huge, wasn't it? 104 or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then we still don't know if he's going to be starting, right? Because they've still got Lewenberger, Bill Chambers... Mm. McKernan. That's true, but he's only a bench option. Yeah, true, but then... It's only worth then, 100k. Then, no, no, he's, he's worth 400. He's, sorry. He's uh, 240, I think. 270, but I mean, sorry, I'm, when I said 100k, I meant 100 more than a baseline player. Which but then I'd rather spend that 100k and... Because you, you don't really know how he's going to go uh, full regular season against proper top-level Ruckman. No. You just can't get, get 30 points, 40 points every game. Yeah, that, that is true, but I think for the potential benefit, it's a fair trade-off. Personally. A couple of um, options that uh, people are... Uh, one is a unique option, uh, Goldie, uh, Goldting from mm-hmm. uh, North Melbourne. Um, he really kind of got overshadowed by Grundy and Gorn last year. But if you look at his scores from... He finished 2018 really well. Um, but he had a couple of bad games that brought his average down. But he's still an option. And uh, the other one was uh, Wits. Oh, uh, yeah. Playing I, had, for, I had him last year. Yeah, yeah. So playing for Gold Coast um, might not be... Like, Put you away from the fact that um, he has some decent scores. Um, he's their then, co-captain this year, so he's yeah. feeling confident. New right. Yes, yeah, stand up because of that. Okay. Um, but yeah, he, he's another option as well. He actually got some put up some decent scores, high average last year. Yeah, nice one. What about wait? So with your midfield, yeah, I want to ask you this: What's your combination between premium players, rookies, and mid-price players? So, my midfield spe- uh, specifically, or...? Yeah, midfield specifically. Mid- midfield specifically. Oh, no, go, go. Yeah. Okay, anyway. So, I usually go with the rule of half primos, half rookie slash mid-prices, depending on the positions and who's available at the time. Uh, midfield, this time I've done four primos, a uh, couple of mid-prices, and then two rookies. So, you obviously want that cash generation 
at the early part of the year, but then you also yeah. want the primaries such as McRae's walk up captain option to get your scores up. Nice one. What about you guys? What about you? Mine's playing? a real weird blend, eh? <laughs> my midfield. What a surprise. <laughs> Oh. I've done something weird, eh? Oh, so I've gone like sort of the two primos of like Cripps and Brayshaw, and then I've got that one in that 500k range, Brad Crouch, yeah. and then Libra in around 400. James Cousins is one that I've sort of mm. think could step up with Mitchell gone, so I've sort of gambled on him, I think, and then a few youngies. Yeah, right. I yeah. think Crouch, Martin, and Libra Torre are going to be really good cash cows this season. Martin, uh, which one? Dustin. Dustin, the cash cow. Yeah, well, he's only priced at 674. Yeah, that is. Which I feel if he has a really good season and falls through with injuries and all that kind of stuff, um, he could be up there, like really up there. Depends on his forward time. Yeah, because I was going to say, minutes it'd help. But then Tom, they got Tom Lynch in, which could free him up a little bit more yeah. this time. That's true. I think he plays much better as a midfielder person. I, yeah. I think yeah. um, Zach Merritt is pretty underpriced at the moment as well. How, uh, how is he underpriced? What's he Well, he's at 736 at the moment, okay. which is... 150,000 under McRae and could play at a McRae level, um, especially bringing Sheil in, could ease up the tag on Zach Murray. Yeah, well. okay. Mm. okay. And then I think cool. also he had a couple of injured, because um, I had him at the side, yeah, he had like a um, game where he got injured at the start, or his average down obviously makes him cheaper this year. Um, so I agree. He's it merits in my team as well at the moment. Um, he's a gun and he is underpriced for his premium status. Um, but then the other mid price options there were like value picks were Crouch but we've talked about uh, Libertore which is kind of a bit iffy if he, he's be injury prone but he um, could be potential uh, potentially good um, I think he scored 104 or something yeah I, I, thought, I, thought, I, thought, I thought I saw a ton, ton up as well yeah um, and then and he's only like 300, 300 okay which is really cheap mm. um, Hanabry and Miles the other two as well but I think Hanabry's injured and Miles yeah, I don't know about Miles. He didn't have a good JLT Yeah, he didn't one, have a good JLT game, yeah. which could put a lot of people off him. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the obvious inclusion there runs midfield is Sam Walsh, right? Yes, yep. yeah, definitely. And Zach Butters I've added as well. Yeah. I had 25 well. possessions, close to 100 points, uh, and I called in one of my other videos, he will go close to an early rising star nomination. So a must-have, you might say. <laughs> but I'll, I've gone mid, mid-price heavy. I've got, well, I've got three mid-price players in my midfield. Uh, I've gone the Brad Crouch... Uh, one, but two players that I think are underpriced Rockliffe at 600k because you know he used to be the fantasy pig and come off a uh, bad groin injury last year, I think that hampered him quite a lot and played a bit forward but I reckon if he has a good pre-season he's, he's potential to ton up most weeks and the other one is my boy Dom Sheed uh, 539k what do you get, 140? 135 in JLT? was it? I know yeah. he had 39 posies so that, and a goal so that yeah, would make sense huge. yeah Points in the whole game. But his last 10 games of last season were like extraordinary. Uh, well, not extraordinary, but like, you know, I mean, like close to elite level. And I think at 539k, he's underpriced. I reckon he could average 90 this year. What about the comeback in of Gaff and that midfield depth being reconciled? That might push him down a rung in terms of priority. True, but they did all play JLT1. Yeah. And he probably had the most time on ground, probably. Um, so, yeah, it could be a factor, yeah. but um, like Shuey and Sheed in the last two Eagles games, including the grand final, were both yeah. the best. So, yeah, that's my stinky bet. The one, the one thing that's putting me off Sheed is that he doesn't have a forward status anymore. Okay. Did he uh, before, did he? Pretty pretty last year. Oh, yeah, and then so that was definitely an option, but yeah. uh, now that he's only mid, I'd rather, instead of taking a risk with him, uh, like, I'd rather get Brad Crouch than, than Sheed. I got them both. Yeah, we'll do that. What about your forward line? How's everyone's forward line? Let's have a look. Uh, I presume everyone got danger. Yeah. Yeah. And what about Devin Smith? I feel like he's a yep. must-have. I did both. Yeah. They're my two premiums. Yeah. So yeah, fir- first two people, the like, first two forwards put in definitely Smith and uh, Danger. Uh, although Smith did have like a bicep injury that was a little bit of a scare, wasn't it? But he's he played his JLT limited, limited yeah. minutes. So he I'm played the second half where they did a thing where the first half they had half their minutes play second half. Okay. Yeah, the okay. other half played. But then, yeah. even then, if you, uh, he's still gone. Obviously, most expensive forward for a reason, uh, main, mainly for his tackling. But if he mm. keeps that up, then that'd be good. I. What about Heaney? Yeah, so Heaney's my third primo yep. for um, my forwards. Yeah. Um, he did 
I didn't get him until later on the season last year. Yeah, uh, me too. Yeah, but then obviously if he's playing because he's playing more midfield time now as well. Mm. Uh, so that's definitely a bonus. But then even then, when he was playing mainly forward, he was still getting close to tons or averaging around 90, which is decent enough to mm. get in my team. Yeah, OK. Uh, I went pretty forward line heavy, actually. I only had two primos in my back line, I think. And then I went with... Well, I w- you probably wouldn't consider him a primo, but he's expensive, and that's Michael Walters. Plays a fair bit of midfield, uh, I reckon. I-, I just love him. I love Michael Walters. Fair enough. Yeah. I think he's so a player. You'd yeah. say he's your fantasy? Yeah, yeah, he's my fantasy pig. Yeah. <laughs> um, Warpool's one I don't mind actually at 480. As yeah. a forward? Yeah, as a yeah, forward, yeah. Big Warpool, yeah. Especially yeah. considering the Mitchell thing again, he's a guy that could play, midfield play an expanded role and so capitalise. I've got one in here, I don't know what you guys think about it. Tim Kelly. Forward? Yeah. What's he cost? Do you know? 630. He's pretty pricey. Like he pretty did. Pricey. He's pricey, but he could have the potential to have a huge. Yeah, I guess he can't really get worse than mm. his first year in the league. I guess unless oh, the savage, he had an amazing first year. That's what I mean. Yeah. I said he can't get worse. That's what I'm saying. It's hard for him to get worse than that, really, unless you take unless he's really taken the whole not getting traded the West Coast thing to heart and. Yeah. Season is engaged. Just tanks I know what you're trying to say, but it makes you sound like he yeah. couldn't do any worse in his first season. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, to <laughs> solid at that point. Like, yeah, he yeah, okay. could probably still perform. His like, potential yeah. is sky high with his performance last season. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that puts me off Tim Kelly is the whole Geelong thing. Um, that obviously they have a lot of premium mids. Like, if yep. you include obviously Daniel Wood, Daniel Wood, uh, Daniel Wood, yeah, Daniel Wood, yeah. Daniel Wood. <laughs> Daniel Wood as well. <laughs> but then you put in uh, Duncan Menegola yeah. as well. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like they always change them between forward and mid, and then they kind of like stuff you up some weeks because they'll get one fifty one week, but then seventy the next. But see, I, yeah, I also like Tim Kelly because he's got the mid and forward tag. Yeah, okay. So it's easily interchangeable if a sudden injury does go down with oh, Crouch or someone like that. You know what I can never find good defender midfielders. To swap out. I always mm. want like a defender midfielder who's good, but there's not too many. I think Angus Brayshaw might have been last year, but he was last year. He's not this yeah. year. Yo was yo as well. Yeah, yeah. But is he just mid now? Yo, yeah, yo's yeah, just mid. Yeah, my whole mid defense now. line is there's no one with a double tag. They're all just yeah, yeah. My back line's pretty expensive, down. really. Actually, Your looking at it, uh, I've gone Frey Primos. Says mine. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Zach Williams. Does everyone have him? Yep. Oh yeah, he's like horse. Even, even before the rule changes and the team, uh, the team changing, uh, he, uh, he came back for the finals game last year and correct. Yeah, turned played up. pretty well. Yeah, oh, yeah. turned up. Turned up right. yeah. yeah. So obviously, and then that cheap price tag is kind yeah. of past it. Yeah, I think there's two players in the back line that I have that I've picked based on their JLT. Marty Hoare. Uh, see, I've got him on my bench. Okay, but I think he's going to play games. So yeah, he'll start round one. I think potentially he's a mature ager. So, so a lot of this will have to change as we get closer to. Yeah, it's going to change after JLT. I'll just pick completely different rookies. I'd say my, my whole yeah. team's just going to full change. Yeah. Yeah. Say next week, all the rookies just tank it. Yeah, yeah, yeah they <laughs> will. That will happen. Uh, Jordan Clark was another one. I know yeah, you were talking Jordan about Clark, him earlier. Yeah. Jack Scrimshaw. Yes, yeah, I've got Scrimshaw in mind as my one. Is he actually going to do well? Maybe not. But he's, he's only two hundred and three. Yeah, though. exactly, and he'll probably play. Yeah, that's why I've got him because the rest of my back line's pretty expensive. Like my next. Expensive Zach Williams. Yeah. He's like my second cheapest backman. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I don't think you can go past Witherden. Yeah, Brisbane. okay. I didn't pick him, interestingly. Especially with the kick out rule. Mm. If he's going to be kicking out every single time. Yeah, he's a bit of a fantasy gun. He's going to kill mm. it. Another defender that uh, I see a few people getting is uh, Nick Newman as well. Yeah, Tom. okay. Was tough went, to, went to Carlton from Sydney. Yep. Um, from what I saw, it looks like maybe he's getting groomed as like the Kate Simpson replacement, mm. getting a lot of plus sixes. Okay. Back line. I think he like top, nearly top scored in the Carlton game. Yeah, I think he did pretty well. I didn't yeah, see yeah. exactly what he got. Yeah, out, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so that that's another option if you want to go not that primo, but yeah. I was, price. I was tossing up between Newman and Miller. I ended up going Miller, but that's still one I'm back and forth on because I liked what I saw from Miller in the showdown. And he's a real hard. And I'm hearing a lot of talk out of the camp, and they always hear this sort of talk like, "Yeah, this guy's looking good on the trap," but you're hearing a bit of that with Miller. Yeah, and it's true. like his. Yeah, he's finally locked down a role. As a young guy that's been bounced all over the place. He's yeah. had a full year to figure it out. Could be his year. I've got a real gamble in my defence. Uh, Oscar Allen from the West Coast Eagles. Ooh, okay. mm-hmm. Now, I know he's played forward the, the JLT game, and I think that's their plan moving forward with him. Um, but fantasy does have him listed as a, as a defender, as a backman. I think if... Is he on the field for you? Yes, yeah. he's on the field, which is, a, which is why I said it's a big gamble. Um, you know, he's... 
cheap at 276k, um, but if Josh Kennedy's in doubt, um, which as his age is going, they tend to rest him a bit, and he does have small nagging injuries, um, and if he does continue to show good promise and good skills like he did in the JLT game, they could go with a, uh, a very tall lineup and put him in there as well. Even I think he could even play with the Kennedy in the team. As the third forward, yeah. I reckon they could roll Kennedy, with Darling and Allen. Just stick Allen in the forward pocket. Yeah, um, Waterman probably miss now out. Now that was Lacroix Lecra- 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 retired, um, yeah. there's a free spot available in the forward line. Yeah, that's it true. just uh, depends whether they've got Vardy in there as well. Because if I think if you've got um, too many tolls in there, they might decide not to go. They well. might, but they, by the time the grand final happened, the Eagles were playing one less forward than they did, or one less tall. Like they started the year with Waterman as the third forward. And Vardy, so they could just revert to having Allen yeah. instead of Waterman this year. It's what are Vardy's prospects? He's, he'll be in the team. He'll As still be yeah, playing. Okay. Yeah, they'll yeah. they'll roll with two rucks. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, another sneaky forward I wanted to mention was Oliver Hanrahan, oh, a Hawthorne small forward. Mentioned. 170k. Uh, had like 19 possessions. I have his stats here. Oh, here we go. It just happened to be open. 19 possessions, two tackles, four inside 50s, yeah. Um, I feel like he's a good uh, value, in fact, bargain price, cash cow. Another one for the forward slash mid, I thought of Will Setterfield. What are the people's thoughts on him? Is he so I've got him in like... my uh, midfield at the moment. Um, I think he's probably going to be a lot almost for round one. What's he cost? Like 250, uh, 251. Yeah. See, I didn't pull the trigger on Setterfield. I don't know. Uh, I, I've, he's in my F4 right now. So he's the top. Yeah, I've got him as a forward. Oh, okay. Oh, he's an F5 for me. Um, so he's one of my uh, under, like rookies for my forward line. Um, I don't think there was any other forwards that could have like fit in that range. Uh, Rankin. Rankin's one. Rankin's um, one what is that? Is the other one? Yeah, I've got both in my forward line. Yeah, I've got risk. Um, um, I got Rankin, but the. Only issue I've, I have with him is he's very classy, not high production. So, yeah. you know, okay. he made the highlights yeah. real in his first JLT game, but had seven possessions. Yeah. So, yeah. that's a that's, that's a, iffy it's one. a risky one. Yeah, I might yeah, not. He's a bit of a Rioli type. Might not keep that. That's yeah, n- another one that same thing as uh, Matt, uh, Parker from St Kilda. Oh yeah, your uh, mate. So he's yeah, hundred seventy eight k starting. Yeah, so yeah. Well, that, that's the game. Um, he kicked two goals. Mm-hmm. But he only had seven touches, so he ended the game on like fifty. Thirty-one, I think. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. Nah, it's fifty. I think okay. fifty-six. So yeah. for a one seventy-eight car, you'd get that. But then, um, yeah, I got him on my team because um, back in, uh, in the summer when we were playing uh, AFL nines, uh, played on him and uh, destroyed him in the back line. So oh, gross! And then the game dollars. started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So he's yeah he's in my other fantasy team as well. No no so then I'll take the credit of him uh, getting getting drafted because I'm pretty sure like the same week where I uh, dominated him in the uh, A49s he uh, okay. dominated the draft combine so ah uh, okay yeah right so what you're saying is you created M- Matt Parker. exactly you are Brendan Archie <laughs> yeah, yeah I say that I'm actually I'm actually Lin Jong so yeah. get it right. <laughs> Spearheading the Chinese expansion. <laughs> I, I just double checked my uh, my fantasy team just then. Um, I thought I had led in my team, but I've taken them out actually. Ooh. And uh, now I remember why. Is um, I was tossing up between obviously like getting Laird and Lloyd together, which both primos. But um, one more person coming back from Adelaide that might affect Laird is um, Brody Smith. Ah, true. So Laird took. I, th- I think he took most of the kick-ins, um, mm-hmm. but then now with Smith back. He, I think that he might take a bit more, so maybe okay. that'll change his role a little bit. Like, in saying that, Laird is still a gun, mm. and you definitely consider getting him, but getting um, Brody Smith's a little, throws a little bit of span in the works and deciding your back line. Yeah. Oh, good call. Good call. Yeah. Um, just looking at my list. Oh, Any... other... oh yeah, no, you got uh, The other uh, mid price or like cheap uh, defender options are Sam Collins from Gold Coast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what came. Because he listed by yeah, yeah, X-Docker, X-Docker went to what, the VFL, did he? Yeah, he killed uh, it in the VFL. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, he picked up by right. Gold Coast. Um, I think he only got 60-odd in his first game, but still for uh, he's got potential. Because I remember when he was playing for Freos, getting some 80s and 90s, so yeah, right. that's, an, that's another option there. He'll probably him. play every game too. Probably. Yeah, a lot of intercept marking, a lot of that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Who are the cash cows that you guys have? Maybe just sitting on your bench or 170k rookie players that you think might turn up? 
Uh, oh, Bailey Scott was going to be... Did I steal yours, what you were going to say? Bailey Scott? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Bailey Scott a midfielder? Yeah, he yeah, is. Yeah. But on, if you sit him on the bench and he... Oh, he might, I'll get him on the bench. Had 21 yeah, possessions. No, no, no. He's 21 possessions um, in his first game. And had a, he's only 174k. Sneaky chance for round one. Oh, good one. suggestion, Morton. <laughs> I think Nick Hine might be a good one from St Kilda. He's the one that only scored 31, <laughs> though. But potential to play around one. Yeah, um, he's a mature age. Sitting on the bench, and if you can make 100k off him in the first couple of rounds, it's an easy 100k to even easily spend on a premium player. I saw he did well in JLT, but I don't know if he'll play, but Brian Myers, maybe? Brian Myers. <laughs> I love saying that. Yeah. Grind, it's just the best Gr- name. Grind, Grind, it's Grind, it's, name. Like, it's <laughs> like he had two male parents, Greg and Dave, no, Craig and Brian, Brian. sorry. Craig. <laughs> Craig. 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 Um, but yeah, anyway. No, he's, I think he could be a gun, actually. I don't know yeah. if he'll play, but he's... I want him gun. to play, so BT can just come and take him. Graham. Another, another person that uh, played was uh, Gibbons from Carden. Yeah. Uh, he scored two goals, but then again, he's one of those... Like, uh, I think it was mainly seeing the goals. Like a, yeah. People were comparing him to Pickett. Right, um, as well. right. So they, he'd get like one or two goals here and there, but then low possession games, yeah. get maximum 60 points. See, that's the Isn't thing. He's he supposed sp- to be mid. He yeah, so he's mid on fantasy, but yeah. from what I saw in JLT, he was mainly yeah. playing in the yeah. square. So what you all about Carlton. They've got a couple of good fantasy picks in there, don't they? Mm, that's true. Yeah, Gibbons, Walsh. Yeah, I had Walsh. another one as well. Setterfield. Yeah, Setterfield, yeah, that was thing yeah. about Gibbons for me is that he kicked two or three with three goals and he still only scored 50. So yeah. that makes me think for the games he doesn't score three goals. Exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, well, one more bigger mid that I see there opening is uh, Constable from Geelong as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Constable who? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think he was going to He probably get into the Geelong main team. And yep. um, obviously he's only 170k, so if he can make some money, then that's good. Had him all year last year, waiting for him to crack that debut and it never happened, so yeah. nah. Dylan Screw Moore him. as well, I don't mind the look of as Once again with the that's logic... That's a fantasy pick. <laughs> yeah. that's once true. again with the logic that he'll get to fill a Tom Mitchell-related hole. Oh, mate, you're just, <laughs> just taking a piss now. <laughs> but yeah, he's another one that I could know play. we're talking about this kind of fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> The other one um, from Gold Coast as well, Burgess. Burgess, I've oh, got yeah. him on my bench as well. Me too. Yeah. Um, very what cool. I like about picking up Gold Coast players is that if they're if they're starting, then you'd assume that they're probably part of the best twenty-two because <laughs> it's not hard to crack <laughs> that. Team. There's uh, no depth. Uh, there, yeah, there's, there's, there's no Burgess, depth. Burgess got a uh, defense and forward tag. True. So he could be like very valuable mm. anywhere an injury drops or if he plays well. It's yeah. always underperforming. Mm. Okay, boys, I think we've covered the fantasy stuff quite uh, thoroughly, you might say. So what we might do for this last segment of the podcast is to tune into some of our questions we get from our viewers. If you're not part of our Discord community... If you're not part of our, <laughs> you're not part of our Discord community, uh, check the link in the description to join up because uh, we've got a great community going on there called True Footy and this is the way people write into us with their questions. So, the first one we got uh, was actually off a YouTube comment, not a Discord comment, but it's from Mr. Bahuba, and the question... Oh, it's kind of like a long-winded post, but he's... <laughs> please stop. <laughs> he's, he's asking us about... Uh, is the AFL doing enough in terms of international expansion of the game? Um, Brendan, we'll start with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm actually uh, from Australia, so... Yeah, yeah. So My last name is Cook. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, is the AFL doing enough in terms of international expansion? It doesn't really seem to this person, I presume it's a male, uh, that it's really on the agenda you enough. Just assume his gender. Well, it's called Mr. Bahuba. <laughs> it's Mr. Bahuba. You can identify as a female, though. Yeah, it seems unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> just answer the question. Well, it could be a female identifying as a male. Well, so the question is, are the, are the AFL doing enough? Yeah, are the AFL doing enough? And my follow-up question is, do you care? Oh, yeah, I was going to start with that. Okay. okay. Um, no. To be honest, I don't think that the AFL should expand internationally. Mm-hmm. Um, well, for the size of our country, um, it, like, it would take too long to expand to the full international game. Uh, they should just focus mainly on perfecting the sport in Australia now. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's still a lot of kings that go get out. But... Um, are they doing enough to actually push for it? Probably not. Uh, what, one game in Shanghai? I think we have a New Zealand game as well. New Zealand, yeah, what, what the... What we did. Uh, Anzac Day yeah, week. Yeah. Right. Um, yep. Even then, that's like two games out of the whole season with 23 rounds and nine games per round. Um, 
I no, feel like they're kind of just doing these things to say that they're doing it. Does that make sense? Mm. Hey, look at us. We're doing international expansion. Um, I don't really think it's needed, though. I think it's profit motivated because there are a lot of people who just have corporate jobs yeah. in, or the corporate AFL who are, whose job it is purely to expand the game. I reckon yeah. that would be the case. Because when you look at that NFL, uh, you can see there's really no need for international expansion. Um, they're hugely popular and highly profitable business um, just staying within the United States and I mean I, I think they have a couple exhibition games like I think they do one in London and, um, and I mean it is globally popular just due to the, the size of it um, but I don't think the AFL really needs to directly go hey we need a Kiwi team or we need to play seven games in Shanghai a year I think it's if they can work as hard as they can developing AFL and the league and the business here rest of the international stuff will almost sort itself out. Mr Bahuba kind of takes it from a standpoint of, I think he is a, an Australian expat, or maybe not, but he lives overseas and he wants, I think he wants to play more... It's a Vietnam viewer. It's not my Vietnam viewer, <laughs> but I don't think so. You're maybe. one Vietnam viewer. Um, but I think it was more like he wants more football in, in the countries that, you know, outside of Australia so people can enjoy him there. So, I know there's smallish local leagues like the States and stuff. And yeah. I think they even do a World Cup. They do, but uh, and he references that, but he, he thinks it's not necessarily enough. My argument would be that um, Australia hasn't even successfully expanded all across the country yet. Yeah, no. it's only, we're only in four different states. Well, that's a lot, I guess. Uh, wait, is that right? Four <laughs> states? We're, no, we're in... We're, oh, sorry, we're, we're prominent in Victoria, WA, South Australia. Tassie. Uh, well, I guess we're prominent in Tassie, but we don't have a team there yet. Um, and then Queensland and New South Wales, um, we just don't really have a presence at all. Because, I mean, you could, you could barely make an argument for a few more cities getting expansion teams, yeah. like a Hobart or Launceston or mm. Darwin or Canberra. Yeah. Um, Canberra's got a pretty successful rugby league team. Yeah. GWS, you could almost call the Canberra team to an extent. They play a fair few games in Canberra each year. Yeah. But then the Western Canberra. <laughs> <laughs> the, the league's already got so many teams and if you add more expansion teams it's just going to, like I say, downgrade the level of footy. Mm, yeah. I mean, like as you can see, like Gold Coast team right now it's, everyone just wants to that doesn't want to stay at Gold Coast, everyone just wants, everyone just wants to go home, doesn't want to play at that club so um, I think one, pop, well not popular, but one thing I, I've read about is um, getting rid of Gold Coast and then moving like North Melbourne to Tassie as well mm. uh, just as in, to expand more but then one more thing in, into like we haven't even uh, with international games, um, it just totally messes up the fixture. Yeah. So already like, as what, what team flies to China? Like, well, yeah, not even that. Well, like it's WA, where you really get like ro- we, 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 always, we we get rolled anyway in having to travel every second week. That's a huge advantage in itself. But then once so you so it should just be Victorian teams that have to travel. No, I would say they shouldn't have to, like they shouldn't need to travel overseas for an exhibition game or like if you want to pay for membership points for like no reason just to like it, it just puts teams to such a big disadvantage, uh, stuffs the fixtures up as did like um, Gold Coast and Port, Port had to have their own buy uh, out of the loop of every every other uh, team. Yeah. So it just yeah I don't think it's worth it. Footy's just gonna yeah. be difficult to implement. Grassroots level, it's not mm. too popular. Because um, I mean, even even Brisbane, they've got a good fan base now, but still not as strong as many other teams. And winning wasn't really the success for them holding on to fans. Like they push all these good draft picks and players to Gold Coast and Western Sydney and stuff, and they did the same with Brisbane, and they won three premierships, and now no one really cares again. Like, mm. Mm. True. I guess my answer to sum it up to Mr. Bhuba would be that the um, <laughs> The AFL has its own sort of short-term goal that it's battling with other sports within Australia. So I don't really expect them to divert more resources into growing the game internationally, especially when the return on investment must be pretty low. Like, it's a long-term game to try and develop, you know, footy in China. Like, how far off is that? Seriously. Best-case scenario, like 100 years. So, yeah, Yeah, that's just my view. Um, Max has another question for us. I've already answered this in a previous video, but just short and sweet. Did you guys enjoy AFLX? And were you annoyed at all that your team's players were forced to participate? Of course. 
Um, I didn't watch much the AFLX. I did catch like a few, few, a few glimpses. Yeah. Um, but from what I saw, if you didn't really study the rules, then it was kind of a like mess. Like um, obviously the players, I, didn't, I feel like the players didn't take it seriously, um, and. I, it was good to see them have fun and see players that you wouldn't see play together in a team play together. But like, if they're going to do a pre-season um, tournament or games, then I'd rather them just do like a state of origin. It'd yeah. definitely bring more viewers. It'd be more interesting and they'll be actually playing like proper AFL. Like, yeah, yeah, Liam Matthews but said the state of origin idea? Yeah, yeah. I did like the cool, uh, cool team names style entrances. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> but they all walk in and they got no oh, suits yeah. and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was funny. Yeah. yeah. Did you like a bush? I like like I consider playing it if there was like less gimmicks, like as a weekday night sort of spot where you go down for your forty minutes, like a nice easy weekday spot where you don't need to organise twenty people to play a team sport. It it served yeah. that purpose fine, especially with square ovals being in a much more abundance than round ovals. True. I, I feel like it, it's it just got treated like a meme, which it kinda yeah. was. Too many the, gimmicks. The team names were kinda meme y. Um like the way, like, it was pretty funny, but the way they were doing, like, the scissors, paper, rock at the start. Yeah. Uh, the, the way that they, like, dressed up to... The AFL didn't present okay. it seriously, so no one really took it seriously. Well, the AFL probably didn't market to people who already like kids. footy. They claimed it as That's a kids thing. They whole, every, yeah. During the whole broadcast, like, this is for the kids, this is all about the kids. Mm. I think, yeah, like you said... Which is when you started watching. <laughs> so it's catered towards, it's catered towards <laughs> Mort. For kids, that's for you. Um... Yeah, no, I think, yeah, State of Origin would be much better or, like, like an American All-Star kind of... Yeah, we like should get the American All-Stars to play AFLX. Yeah. <laughs> How good would LeBron James be as a Ruckman, really? Yeah, probably decent. <laughs> He'd be a walk-in for <laughs> most teams, almost. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I, and the also asked, yeah, are you annoyed players from your club are forced to participate? I would say I don't think they were forced because I know that Luke... Uh, Nat Fife said he wanted to pick Luke Shuey with the first pick in AFLX and the Eagles held back Luke Shuey. I guess he wasn't quite fit, but um, I would say that uh, no one was forced. A lot of people pulled out as well. Yeah, yeah. right. So Again, I think it's there's like, what was the purpose? I mean, they probably got a nice paycheck, but then that was about it. I think they got like The well, captain's got like 50 grand each. 50 I, grand, yeah, right. I don't know what the, each player would have got, but yeah, that's probably 10. But I guess at the end of the day, forget it is their job. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. Uh, all right. I'll direct this one to Busher because right. it's a Fremantle-related question. Okay. Uh, this is from Bruce, and I apologise. I'm pretty sure Bruce asked this a couple of podcasts ago and we didn't get to it because um, I missed it. But Bruce wants to know, how many years do you give Ross Lyon to get Fremantle into the finals before he should be considered for the sack? Almost this end of this year, if we, I don't see improvement, I'd... Yeah, but finals. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, if we don't make finals within two years... Two years? Two years, can him. But to be fair, I've... Joined the one at Canyon Wagon about a year ago. Just, uh, yeah, okay. I got yeah. pretty done with him. It sounds like a lot of free panel, yeah. free metal fans I know are pretty impatient with him. Yeah, I'm pre- like, I'm prepared to give him a crack, but at the same time, I'm just sort of. I feel like he's always shooting off past the glory. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. I, I think the main thing that makes Ross look bad as well is that his uh, game style. It's not well. Personally, for me, it's not that great to watch. Uh, it's very low scoring. Uh, but might, that might be because of the lack of their forward talent and their yeah. like, shitty like, uh, forward drafting. Mm. Uh, style with no tall I want to see how he adapts to the rule changes, actually, yeah. because he's the, he was the OJ of pressing in zones and all this stuff. So now mm. that you can boot over the zones a bit more with the run-out rule and the 6-6-6, I want to see if that will make him play a more traditional offensive style rather than his flooding sort of style. I feel like the, the new additions to the team as well, um, Hogan and Roaring Lobster. <laughs> uh, they definitely help. Obviously, their forward presence, which they've been lacking since Pavlich. Um, so I feel like if if Frio put up more competitive games with more goals, I feel like fans wouldn't hate on Ross as much uh, because it would be at least entertaining to watch. But obviously, um, it, with, he's been at this like um, like no man's land really for a while. That's why fans are getting a bit agitated and annoyed because I obviously want the glory. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fair enough. Um, well, Bruce has follow-up questions. Ooh. What's your favourite holiday destination in WA, Busher? Roto. Roto. I've been going there my whole life, love it. Yeah, right. Yeah. What about you, Morts? Uh, I really like Shark Bay. Yeah, yeah? Yeah, right. Nice little place. Yourself? 
Chinatown. Uh, like, uh, yeah, oh. Chinatown in Northbridge. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> nah, um, holiday destination, I haven't really gone on many holidays. I'd say, like, down south is probably the most generic answer I can just give. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, technically, me living in Australia is a holiday because yeah, <laughs> I, came, I, came, I, came, I came around so a boat and like, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. We've got one on board, so we can so, 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 I, I, No I, pun intended. I've got a green card. So. Yeah. <laughs> green card. Yeah. <laughs> so international expansion. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. For me, I would say I'm from Bunbury. It's hard to put that down as a de- holiday destination, uh, but Depends I do like what you like to do. Yeah, yeah. Like Black Diamond or Burren. I think Busso. I just like going yeah, to Busso. Yeah. I've got family there, so yeah. Uh, say bus stop. The bus stop. Yeah, the bus stop. Yeah, <laughs> my family lives there. Yeah, right. oh, that's, yeah. Where you, that's where you meet the local meth dealer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, in Bunbury. Yeah. yeah. Um, what Australian capital city, Bruce asks, do you dislike the most, and why? Go this way now. Dislike the most? Yeah. Australian Which, capital city. Uh, well, I haven't, I haven't uh, left WA. I've okay. been overseas. I haven't been interstate yet. So Perth. So I'd say <laughs> as, there's a lot of flogs in Perth. So it's a lot of hate. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'd say Perth. Yeah, exactly. A lot of Perth. I hate it. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, what about yourself, Pusher? I've only been to Melbourne, but from what it, like the stereotypes of people from Melbourne and stuff, I'd probably say Melbourne based on like the stereotype of it being a bit of a so one out of one. Yeah. We're just um, gonna lose a lot of Melbourne viewers now. <laughs> <laughs> What about yourself, Moore? You used to live in Queensland, didn't you? Yeah, so I've actually been to three capital cities in Australia. Well, flex. Um, obviously flex. Obviously Perth, Brisbane, um, and Sydney. Uh, I quite like Perth living here. Um, Brisbane is a lovely city. It's probably my favourite city in Australia. You'd probably be the only person I know to have said that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Bruce Vegas, we call it. True, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I've been you to know, You know you're in Perth. I do right like now, Sydney right? for all the tourist attractions and stuff, but it's just a bit big and a bit... Hustle bustle for me, so Sydney's gonna have to get out of mine. Cool, gross. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's my fantasy pick. <laughs> uh, well, I top the list because I've been to four capital cities. I've been to uh, you got Perth, but you got uh, I've been to Sydney Airport, I've been to Adelaide, I've been to Brisbane, I've been to Hobart, and I've been to Melbourne. So, uh, is that four, isn't it? Yeah, it's five, including Perth. Um, the capital of what did I miss out? WA Fockers. <laughs> Wait, which state did I miss out? Have I been to every... Darwin, Northern Territory. North, Northern Territory. Yeah, okay. Have you been to Canberra, ACT? Nah, haven't been to the Territory. Oh, I've been to Canberra, actually. Oh, okay. Huge. Very cold. <laughs> yeah, okay. I've heard that. Uh, how, how disappointed would you be if, um, since you didn't answer this question a couple of podcasts ago, like, Bruce just stopped watching? Yeah. <laughs> he just answered all his, nah. all his questions. All his people uh, like... Oh, he's in the Discord. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's now the Bruce podcast. Yeah, it's you, true. Bruce. true. Um, didn't we make Bruce a mod? <laughs> He's a top oh, fan. Fair enough. No. Top fan. He's a top fan. Um, now it's awkward. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, I would say my least favourite out of all those, maybe, maybe Adelaide. I don't know. I used to go over there for Taekwondo. So um, I was over there for fights. You're not under 12's Bunbury Taekwondo champion, Jason McCullough. Under 14 national Australian oh. champion. <laughs> <laughs> just going to oh. put that out there. Yeah. So I could beat up any 14-year-old. <laughs> um, oh, gross. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I, I like them all, to be honest. Uh, Melbourne's my favourite. That would have been. Is that because we won the grand final there last year? Or? Yeah, and it's just the home of the last place you should do. Is that because someone recognised <laughs> no, you at the grand final? Yeah, someone recognised you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's because someone recognised you in Melbourne. That's why you love Melbourne. Yeah, you true, true. Melbourne. A podcast for you. Oh my God, Jesse, true 40 podcast. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it was someone. Hopefully that's definitely a watching. lie. No, that's definitely a lie. You're like, Two Bunnings customers have come up to me and said, hey, it's true footy. Yes, truth. When you're like, I don't know when, when you're standing in doors, like, when you when you come back out, yeah. just, like, you just say, "Here's twenty footy." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> slipping, the, uh, slipping like buying skip hard. Here's some uh, cash. Uh, and the cafe. Yeah. 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 You want some Andro, Andro, yeah, and that shit's expensive. Exactly. That's yeah. just slipping up. <laughs> um, all right, final question, I'm guys. Before, <laughs> before we wrap it up, um, we have a final question from Girth Lord Forty Eight. Um, I'm hoping 48 is not his year of birth. But I think that says 69. <laughs> no, it says 48. Yeah. Yeah. Girth Lord 48. Does anyone at True Footy have a secret talent? Uh, well, I did kind of mention my Taekwondo one, so it's not really a secret anymore, but uh, tell your friends. Uh, but I do know someone else actually at this table with a secret talent. Um, I'm fluent in German. Van het uranieren, van het potten. What does that mean? I like Harry Potter. Will members of the crew kindly refrain from urinating on the poop? 
Tell are, me are that you wasn't Hitler? actually. <laughs> is that, is that, are you are you Hitler? <laughs> oh well. Oh well. Oh, wow. oh that's the line, is it? Yeah. But we're only allowed to crack Kevin Spacey yeah. jokes oh, on this yeah. podcast. Yeah. yeah. We're allowed we're allowed pedos, but not <laughs> not, not 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 geniuses, <laughs> right? Yeah. Anyway, uh, Mortz. Yes. A while ago, I found out an interesting thing about you, which was that you are Perth's biggest. Scripted wrestler. How, what would you describe it as? It's like the equivalent of WWE in Perth. Yeah, so... Would you call it scripted or choreographed wrestling? What, no, not really. It's more entertainment is probably the word we like to use. Um, this sports, is not a joke. It sounds like he's joking, but this is real. No, thing. this isn't a joke. I'm actually a trained professional wrestler uh, at EPW in Perth. Um, good plug. Um, do, you know, do you know John Cena? No. <laughs> I probably know someone that knows someone that knows someone. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't be able to see him anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I look like him though. So yeah, true. Oh, yeah. From the waist down, because <laughs> <laughs> of all the steroid abuse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, it's a good form of athletic entertainment. I wouldn't say scripted because, I mean, probably at the higher levels they do have mm. scripts and stuff they need to follow. But at a local level where it's a lot more intimate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this isn't gay. There's um, no speedos involved. Nothing um, wrong with that. No, a lot of it. There um, are some speedos. I've actually been to one of these. Fun. <laughs> it is training. It takes a lot of practice and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, but literally, it's like tables, ladders, and chairs. Some shit. Like I, like I went to one of your your fights. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's pretty hectic, and then some of the guys are really athletic. Yeah. No, like some of the moves and taking some big ones. Pull off is just like incredible. Like <laughs> that's all you took out from there. That some of the guys are athletic. Um, but no, a lot of it um, just does come from the top of your head. Um, <laughs> wrestling is real. <laughs> um, no, it's just a good form of athletic entertainment, and it's a show for people. Um, there is a big following. There actually is a big following. I think. We went out to Swan Valley or something, was it? No, was it Swan Valley? No, was it... Uh, what suburb was that? You know, I can't remember. But it was, yeah, far away. And Somewhere. there was, like, some mad keen people in the crowd going, yeah. Oh, yeah! So that, was actually, uh, that was the biggest crowd I performed in front of, and it was about 600 people, I think, that counted. Yeah, right. Which is huge, because, for one, a lot of people don't even know there's wrestling in Perth, and then for there to, be, for there to be a crowd of 600 people yeah. going to watch it. Yeah. Um, for example, that'd probably be a bigger crowd than your average SBL game, which is, like, the really? high-level... Uh, That's incredible. Uh, it's like the basketball, like yes. quivering oh, the basketball yeah. for basketball. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, no, it's got a really big cult following, and with the with the internet and stuff, it's it's only gotten bigger, and you can watch it from all over the world. I know there's mm. people that are fans in America and England and stuff. It's on our product, and it's um, it's cool that it's at such a local level. It's become so good and such high quality. Some of the like the wrestlers, they actually have like personas. Did you have a persona as well? I did. I did. Um, I know you did. That's why I asked. <laughs> um, so, to make it more entertaining for people, people do come up with characters. Um, a lot of them are closer to real life, which can make it a lot better and seem more real. Which is um, why you were a leprechaun. I wasn't a leprechaun. Uh, mine was a bit different from who I am normally. I was a vegan. Um, you love that meat, don't you? That's Wait, like... a, a vegan wrestler? Me. Yeah, so the... The whole purpose of it was to play onto the trend of people getting real annoyed with social justice warriors. And, the Daniel um, Bryan angle, basically, is that what you've... Yeah, uh, pretty, pretty, much, Bryan pretty, pretty much I did it first, really. Yeah. So, um, Daniel Bryan copied you, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but no, so everything... The whole point of it is everything vegans do technically is correct. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like really, we yeah, shouldn't be yeah. eating that much meat or destroying the environment or anything, but... <laughs> People just hate it when you shove it in their face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I've been told. Like, <laughs> even this character, for example, that I mentioned, he's currently got the belt and he's literally had it made out of like all natural materials, like hemp and shit, yeah, just to don't be, be with his character. Yeah. And yeah. Um, just so, so he can judge the crowd and like rant and get booze from them. Are you in character? Is that why you're saying we shouldn't do that? You got any carrots under that table? <laughs> <laughs> is this a wrestling match right now? Like, yeah. <laughs> to break the table. Did you, um, do you fight alone or do you have like a partner? <laughs> Normally alone. For this one instance, I did have a partner. Mm -hmm. And what um, were they dressed as? <laughs> my partner was a carrot. Um, he was the animal safety and security carrot. Uh, so abbreviated for short, the ass carrot. Oh, that's um, right, the ass carrot. I do remember that. Um, actually, yeah. yeah, he was a good companion while he lasted. Mm. 
Do you have a really intimate, intimate relationship yeah, with this say. carrot? Took an unexpected turn? Yes. <laughs> to, to unexpected no comment. <laughs> Well, that is interesting. That is something that I think a lot of people yeah. watching this. So, if anyone watching this likes wrestling, yeah. um, check it out. Explosive Pro Wrestling in Perth, EPW. Yeah, um, it's great fun. It's a great night out. Like not only for young people around our age, but kids and families. And you got people from eighty years old to five years old fighting, <laughs> not fighting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, everyone enjoys it. And it's a great night out. That's cool, man. Like, I remember when you first told me about it, you said all you wanted to do was grow up and be someone like Rikishi, I think you said it was. In, uh, <laughs> you, you, you kind of modeled Still 100 it. kilos less than <laughs> yeah. Rikishi, but... Um, What's well, Rikishi's signature move as well? Yeah, yeah, just show us. Yeah, yeah, show us. Yeah, 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 Demonstrate on Jesse. We get demonetized. You get demonetized. We will get demonetized for a lot of things. Do you want me to pull out my pants now? But we'll get re-monetized when we upload on Pornhub. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to end the podcast. I think. <laughs> All right. Yeah, hit us up at uh, pod, uh, on, on Pornhub when uh, Mortz is just like, when, when Mortz beats the shit out of some meat. <laughs> oh, you cut from the I think I'm going to cut that. Yeah, cut that. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a recurring guest. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for coming on. My That's good right, friends man. and colleagues us. at work. Need you. I'm the pusher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> friends and colleagues. Yeah, like, I got, I got, I got touched. I got touched. And yeah. yeah, and busher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so. If you're still watching this, which I doubt anyone is, make sure you hit subscribe. Join the Discord link in the description. Um, the last bit. Yes, yeah, sorry, Mort, you, you <laughs> can take over. Hit the like button below, leave a comment, um, and obviously subscribe. Make sure you turn the more the... subscribers we get, the more money Jesse makes. This has been another True Footy Podcast.